Welcome to this episode of Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. On this episode, Slava Novogenia will be joining us from Mahjong Time, and we're going to be talking about tournaments. Hello, everyone. Thank All you right. for being here, Michelle. Yes, let's Thank talk about tournaments. Um, okay. We do have many tournaments going on. We do have... Uh, I think all the all types we need. Uh, we need three major. Uh, we have three major types of tournaments. Um, uh, one that we call official tournaments. Uh, these happens. Uh, these tournaments happen um, on Saturdays, always on Saturdays. And um, one Saturday is American. One is MCR. So we rotate them. So uh, each uh, each style pretty much gets one tournament a month. So we have 12 tournaments uh, in a year. That's the official ones. Okay. Uh, then we have the marathon, the one that you already checked out a couple times or so. Um, this is different. This is available all the time, 24 seven. As long as you have four players, you can start a tournament. So you don't have to wait for a specific time, a specific day. You can play at night if you want, if there are players. Um, and then we have elimination tournaments. Uh, these tournaments happen on Saturdays and Sunday, mostly on Sunday, um, and also at a specific time. And uh, these tournaments are are good because sometimes people lose interest in the tournament when they don't win, and they kind of eliminate these people. So if you don't have many points, you're getting eliminated. And if you start 16, then next round could be 12 and then eight and so on until there are only four left. Okay. So three so, times. Yeah. The major ones are the official ones. We'll probably talk about more and the marathon. Very successful tournament. And I love that one. I definitely want to get to the differentiators with those three. I would like to first acknowledge that Laura has joined us and Irene, if you're in the room with us, say hi in chat so that we know you're here. If you missed the introduction, this is the Table Talk Live Mahjong Central Variety Show where we talk all things Mahjong. And on this episode, we have Slava Novogenia of Mahjong Time and we're gonna be focused on tournaments at Mahjong Time. As he was saying, there are several different times. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Shell and Marsha have joined us. So if you have questions during this interview, please write them in caps in live chat. And that way I can quickly find them and we can answer your questions. I have several questions prepared for Slava. So if you have any additional questions, I'll try to identify those in advance so that we can be sure to ask Slava. After this episode, we can always carry the conversation on at both my Facebook group or the Mahjong Time Facebook group. And I'll make sure to have links to both of those in the video description below. So let's see, we wanna say hi to Anna and Martha H also are joining us. Again, we're talking about tournaments at Mahjong Time with Slava Novogenia. So Slava, when these tournaments are posted on Mahjong Time, one I noticed is named GMT. What does that mean? That uh, stands for Global Mahjong Tournament. So basically it's an international tournament, well, such as the marathon as well. All the tournaments are international, but we kind of emphasize that in, in this one because this happens when all players are online. Many players like that setup because it does give you the feel of uh, land tournament. I mean, the offline tournaments because you stay there for many hours, for many rounds, and then you get the results the same day and you have the winner at the same time. So you get the congratulations from everybody at the same time. It's it's really fun and many people like love that tournament. I'm looking forward to it. I registered for the one in January and one thing that I was looking for was the ongoing schedule because I wanted to register for all the tournaments for this year. But how does the scheduling work? Well, you cannot register for the whole year because we post the tournament as soon as this one is completed. As soon as this one's finished, then we post the, the, the next one. 
Um, we just don't want to have too much information on the tournaments page because we post all the tournaments. It's going to get confusing. And uh, secondly, is some people forget that they've registered, and that becomes a problem. Then you have a no show. Oh. tournament. Okay, that's a good point. So after each tournament that you register for, go to the Mahjong Time website tournaments page for the schedule. After the tournament for that month, there'll be another one posted once it's complete. Yes. So, and that's as you wish. Now, the, the tournaments, there's a winner for each tournament, like the January tournament, there'll be a winner. But is there a, an accumulative winner for the year? Oh, yes. Yes, there is a page with the ranking uh, for the oldest years. The, everything is counted. And um, the weight of some of the tournaments that happened in the past is not as, I mean, the formula is, is quite complicated. So you get a weight uh, less than, the, for example, a tournament that happened this year. But yes, we do have a page uh, for all the rankings or for the GMT tournament. For anyone who is interested in playing in a tournament, how did they find the information about the schedule and how do they register? Well, tournaments tab, um, this is where you find all the information um, on the website, same thing on in the client, also the tournament uh, tab. And you look at the tournaments, the style, the American or MCR or whatever you like, and just click uh, register, it's pretty much one click registration. Just make sure to, to check the time when it starts. Let's see. Someone, uh, Anna, asked, are start times Eastern time, especially for American Mahjong? We are in San Diego in California, so we post uh, Pacific time most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, the GMT tournaments, which happen on Saturdays uh, once a month, um, they start at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that's okay. 1 p.m. Eastern time. And that's always okay. like that. It's been for many years like that, at least 10 years or so. So okay, excellent. 10 a.m. So it's always if time changes, whatever changes, it's 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, then it starts. As far as the rules for American Mahjong, because that's what we're focused on in this particular episode, what rules apply, especially for scoring? Is it using the values on the card for yeah. American Mahjong? Yeah, exactly. Yes, the card. We don't okay. have any other rules, any other cards, only the American card. Okay. And the rules are going to be standard American Mahjong rules per the National Mahjong League. Yes, exactly. Okay, excellent. Let's see now. Um, for the each, I, I noticed the schedule, there are going to be four games. And do we have to have those games complete within one hour or is each game 15 minutes? I think you get only 15 minutes because 10 okay. minutes is a break. You get four hours. So it starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time, but uh, the tournament ends at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And you get four rounds. Um, uh, and that's 50 minutes each. So you have to complete four games in 50 minutes. As far as I remember. Four games in 15 minutes. And when one game is complete, it launches right into the next game. Yes. It's like you do in a marathon. One, second, third, fourth. And fourth completed, then the round is done. Okay. Excellent. Let me just check chat here. Anna asked, what happened to marathon games since December? I, I, they, ha they haven't been available in January. It's a vacation time for Marathon. We have a vacation. The Marathon is a very, very complex system. Um, we do have five seasons. So even, uh, but you get the score for only four best seasons. So pretty much one season you can, uh, you can skip. You might not even play at all. Or for example, you didn't start in, in the first season. You, you realized you want to play in the Marathon in the second season. You're still good. You're not going to. Uh, miss uh, much um, because everybody else would be uh, scored the same four seasons and even one is skipped you're still good you can, you'll still compete with the with the top players January is there's 
no, no. marathon for mahjong time overall no, so no, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah. yeah correct <clears throat> sorry so february there'll be another marathon yeah february 15th all of them start uh, we have three american mcr and the uh, rich so the gmt tournament is different than marathons just so everybody in the room understands completely um, different. go ahead yeah completely different completely okay. different. two different systems the gmt you always start at 10 a.m pacific time and it's always four hours you have to commit for four hours um and then you get the, the at the end at the end with the marathon it's different we have five seasons each season is two two months you get a winner at the end of each season and then a, a winner at the end of the year uh, based on uh, performance on each season so for marathons the more you play the better chance that you have of having uh 10 good consecutive games score well in the marathon you you have to play at least 10 games i mean you could play less it's just if okay. you want to get uh, to get a good score you have to play 10. 10 games or 10, 10 marathons yeah 10 uh, 10 marathon games like okay. four games. yeah i see yeah one not hour. in one setting though right like it could be 10 marathons over four days yeah yeah i could you could do that with the marathon it's uh, this um this tournament uh, is always available 24 7 so you can you can um, join it at any time and um, but the thing is that you you you're not going to get a winner each time you play one game you get a winner for that specific s session but to get a winner of, over you have to wait for two two months uh and then you get a winner and you the, get the, season, the season winner will yes. be announced yes okay yes. i think i get it and i'm incidentally I'm going to be re-watching this and I'll make notes and have a document available as show notes so that you can see a summary of the Q&A as we go along. So we do have some questions in caps. I'm just going to go over them to make sure that we keep up with the questions from our viewing audience. Irene asks, is there no break in the games or is it four hours straight through? I'm assuming she's talking about the tournament. And I believe you did mention that it's ten minutes. it's a 10 minutes break after the after the deal. So four games, 10 minute break, yes. four games, 10 minute break, four games, 10 minute break. And finally, four games, 10 minute break. So there's four sets of four games with a 10 minute break in between four tournaments. Pretty much 50 minutes, 10 break, 50 minutes, 10 break. Yeah. And in 50 minutes, you, you complete uh, four games typically. But if you don't, then that score doesn't count. So it would be three. Okay. Very good. The next question is, let's see, uh, just to clarify, Cindy, it's four games in 50, five, zero, 50 minutes, four games in 50 minutes. The next question is from Irene do the tournaments increase or decrease your ranking in regular play on Mahjong time? If you play well, if you win, it decreases. If you, if you don't play well in the tournament, it's like a regular game. It's just regular game. It's just for that specific table, you get um, a tournament uh, score as well. So you get a guild score, you get uh, Mahjong time ranking, and and the actual tournament so you're kind of competing in three different uh scores you're getting different scores for different uh so different if you games. win it applies to both guilds and your just personal ranking and personal. As, well as, as well as the tournament yes correct okay that's nice now i have noticed that there are some accolades for players badges and different Awards won. Oh, Can yes. you explain some of those? Um, when you win on a GMT tournament, you get a medal. So that uh, besides getting coins and whatever prizes were announced, uh, you also get a medal uh, saying you won the first or second or third uh, place in the tournament. And you get that medal for a while. Uh, some medals are, um, I think there is one type of medal. It, 
it's only uh, stays till the next GMT, but many of them you carry over for next year. And so it stays with you. It's like your avatar pretty much becomes oh. your achievements. Okay. Also, That's you're good. posting the guild, uh, whatever uh, guild you belong to. And if, uh, if, if that guild is winning is the first place. Uh, and also, as you noticed, your rank, um, your ma uh, module time rating, if you're first or in, in the top 10 or in top 50. So these are the, the icons you see during the game. These are our player achievements in different ways. Excellent. Since we, you mentioned a minute ago about guilds, is there any limitation where guild mates are not playing, <clears throat> excuse me, at the same table in a tournament or a marathon? And what, what, um, ways are there some security measures in place to avoid any type of collusion? Um, collusion does happen once in a while, but it's really a big while. I'd, I'd say um, it's not typical for players to collude, but it does happen, did happen maybe, I don't know, the last time I heard about it, maybe it was a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> See, the, the way it's set up, the guild is set up, uh, guild members, obviously, they want to win their guild, they want uh, uh, to win. But yes. at the same time, they compete among themselves. So if okay. you're first, uh, if you're, you accumulated uh, the, the most points, you're getting the, the, the bigger part of the pot, or whatever you're getting the, the chips. If you are the last one, you're getting nothing. So it doesn't, it discourages you to play into your guild mate because you are going to get the last uh, 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 the last place in uh, within a competition within the guild and that's not cool too so you're not getting the chips right. and you're ranked the last and maybe sure. the guild leader will kick you just because you're not getting enough points i don't know some people yeah. get kicked because of that and also it could affect your ranking if you're falling on your sword to try to help your you and, me you're and hurting it, yourself and if it does get escalated to us, and then we did uh, find cheating and unfair play, of course, we suspend these players. Okay. Uh, um, again, this is not a problem. This uh, That happened really long ago. So I, I don't really even recall the exact details of the case. Okay. And I, I from my experience, you have a wonderful community of players. I don't think I've ever run into any ethical problems in the many years that I've been a part of Mahjong Time. But someone had asked about it, and I just wanted to make sure that we covered that question because it does come up rarely. So at least we have it out there that there is some uh, discouragement in place to avoid that kind of a problem, and it's rare. <clears throat> so we talked about the schedule and registration. We talked about the differences between marathons and the official tournaments. We talked about the time commitment. <coughs> Excuse me. What happens if only three players show up? Well, in the marathon, nothing happens. The game doesn't start. But in the uh, in GMT, when you pre-register and you uh, were supposed to come at a, uh, at a specific time, you don't show up at <clears> all. <throat> A bot will play for you, uh, or player services will find a player in the lobby. These players typically get uh, paid uh, 500 coins, and they play. Oh. Uh, they uh, they play for the missing player. And when the tournament day comes, what is the process to making sure you're at the table when that time starts? Uh, the GMT, if you're referring to the GMT tournament, always wait for an invite. Wait for an invite? For an invite from the system. <laughs> Don't try to find your table. Uh, you could find your table, but it's it's the best to get uh, to wait for the invite. The system will start sending invites and wait for your invite. Just click accept and you'll get to your to your table. You don't have to look for the specific table because you have to be at the specific table to uh, to enter the tournament. Okay. And when you get the invite, it's a kind of shortcut. You click and you're in. And you check in before, like 15 minutes before uh, before the tournament. 
Otherwise, player service might replace you with somebody else because they might think it's a no-show. And uh, so try to come in a little bit earlier and you'll be fine. You'll get invites and uh, just accept and play, accept and play. That's all. So when you say check in, we just log in to the yeah, check in, Just log in. Just log in. Do nothing. Do nothing because we know you're already in. The system knows. Okay. You're logged in. It's kind of checked in. Okay. Got it. Very good. All right. Let's see. We talked about the scoring and guilds. That really takes care of all of my questions. Does anybody in the viewing audience have any questions for Slava in regards to tournaments? Just write them in live chat in caps. So far, I think we have all the questions answered. Oh, let's see, Marsha's asking, is the cost dragon coins or gold coins? Yeah, the cost is, um, is $1 to enter the GMT tournament. Uh, it's uh, it's 300 gold coins, which is $3, but you get uh, 200 back after you participate in a tournament. If you don't participate, we, you don't get the 300 uh, back at all, nothing. But if you do participate, you get 200 back. So that way you pay $1 to enter this tournament. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonable. Um, there is uh i think 1500 is to enter the marathon though um this one uh, 1500 uh, is one and a half dollars or so yeah okay let's see uh kristen has a question have you considered hosting a full day tournament i believe the gmt is a full day isn't it well, Let it's just... more of a half day. Oh, it is. Okay. Let me just look at the schedule. Let's see. Four hours. Well, uh... okay, I see. Okay, good question, Kristen. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I have not considered mostly because people get tired. So when we uh, plan this tournament, we um, have taken into consideration many, many things. And this one was one of them. Like, um, um, getting players committed for a whole one day is harder than getting them committed for just um, four hours. I think the better way to do it, if you'd like to have a longer tournament, maybe uh, have it over two days, Saturday and Sunday, instead of doing it one day, because I think that way you'll get a better participation, I would say. So I think I would consider two days, four, uh, four hours, two days. We could work on a new tournament. Actually, we've been doing these tournaments for many, many years. And um, I'd like to change something. I'd like to have something new, some some new way. And yes, uh, Chris, I, I like this uh, this proposal. I'll think about uh, about it, but we do need more players involved. So, so okay. I think, um, you know, propose something. I, I'm open. I'm open to have a new tournament. OK, so we'll try to get more players in tournaments and maybe that'll be a, a good indicator for you to try something new. Let's see, we do have another question. And this, this is in regards to a perk for winning a big hand during the week, I think. This is from Anna. She says, I won a game of the week and received an email stating I would receive a keychain. How long does it get take to get the keychain? Okay. I think I think it, it does take about two months to get processed, but you get it after all. Yeah, it does. It does take longer. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, it took me a little while. I did get mine though. It, it came eventually. So, um, let's see. We have another question from Sharon. What do you enjoy most about the tournaments? Have you played in the tournament tournaments yourself, Slava? I played in marathon. Um, I think it's it's that um, competitiveness you enjoy mostly because when you just go for a, for a, for a game on marginal time in the evening after work uh, you know you just uh, that's one type of of a play when you play in a tournament you're much more committed and you want to participate and win so that's the most 
probably people enjoy the most. And when I played in a, in a marathon, yeah, yeah, I, I really wanted to, to win and, and have rank higher and uh, people to see how, how skillful I am. So I think that's, that's the major thing why people play in the tournaments. And of course, getting prizes and you know, appreciation. True. Now, what are the prizes for marathon winners by season? You say the winners are announced per season for marathons. What are the prizes for marathons? Well, they get to choose uh, a trophy, a VIP membership. I think there's mm -hmm. uh, gold coins. Uh, I don't re recall exact prizes mm -hmm. right now. Um, there was an additional prize last year for um, for posting uh, Mahjong time, for promoting Mahjong time on Facebook. Uh, like you play in a tournament, if you post a picture, uh, just a oh. screenshot. Yeah, a screenshot or a video, you're qualified all the time. So um, then you are getting qualified for an additional prize. And this prize will get much more increased this year. That one was just a starter. And now we're going to increase this one. Uh, the other price will stay the same, but this one will, uh, will go up. And this one, you don't have to be the first in uh, ranking because not everybody posts uh, a screenshot. So okay. many times players who are not first, not second, maybe third, fourth, or even fifth win, um, or even tenth win the, win the prize. So you don't have to be the first. But if you do post a video or a screenshot, you have to do it twice during the season, a uh, week before the end. You can't do it if you know you're on first, I'm going post. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to do it during the, uh, the season. And then at the end, uh, who ranks higher and has posted the screenshots or a video on a social media, gets that price and this price will increase how much i don't know uh we'll post it soon i wasn't aware of the the uh, benefit to posting uh or sharing about your wins is this listed on the mahjong time website or on your blog on the blog where the rules are okay. uh i'm not sure the uh, on the website if i think that we have the same information on the website and on the blog supposed to be the same <clears throat> okay excellent i do see another question from anna she's just asking if it's still valid posting a screenshot on facebook you can post any win on facebook even yeah, in anything. a regular game excuse yeah, me anything <coughs> it just has to be twice it has to be two screenshots not on one you can do it twice at the same time it just two okay screenshots. And that's all, okay. a comment or not, just pretty much works. Okay, I'll have to test that and, and see what happens there. Okay, well, I think uh, we have answered questions. I don't know if anyone else has any more questions. This is the time if you want to ask about either marathons or tournaments. We got one. We got another question. So we'll keep going as long as we have questions. Two of the same game or two of different games for the screenshot is uh, what Anna is that's, asking. That's a good question, but two screen uh, uh, two screenshots for the same game would work. Okay, so you're looking for two separate screenshot posts. Uh, uh, excuse me, once again, the question. Okay, let's see. Does the screenshot post have to be via the Facebook link oh. after a game? Um, no, it, it doesn't have to be via, um, via Facebook link. Um, whatever screenshot you have uh, of the tournament you're playing, it has to be the screenshot of the marathon tournament. It, has, it couldn't be just a game. No, it doesn't work. It has to be okay. that tournament you're playing. And it has to be a screenshot. You could do it via a link uh, after the game. If that works, I think uh, if you do that, it's not a screenshot, but, but that one will work. If you post it, if you click on the link after the game and and it posts it on your um, on your timeline or where it posted, that works, that works. Or you can take a screenshot yourself and just send it in. Uh, uh, oh, Facebook. I see. Okay, because I have played in just a regular game and every now and again, I'll get a pop-up that says share on Facebook. Yes, you could do that, that if, you click on it. 
if you click on it, uh, we'll ask you um, to authenticate and uh, we'll post for you. It's not going to be a screenshot. It's going to be a link to the game, which is fine. Which oh, I see. Okay, so you're saying you could do that or you can take a screenshot using print screen on your on your. Yes. Anyway, on your all we want is you to share the information about the marathon and Mahjong time so we get more players. Okay. That's all. I see. It's okay. It's a way to spread the spread the news about the marathon feature in Mahjong time. Yes. So a screenshot or sit, uh, share the link on Facebook and you could yes. be rewarded. Okay, excellent. Right. So we do have another question from Marsha. Should we use an hashtag or something like that with it or is it just the screenshot or link itself sufficient screenshot is enough but yes you could you could you would do even more good for Mahjong time this way okay excellent very good all right well i will be sure to take notes on our table talk live episode and pro provide a link to show notes so for anyone who's been in and out of the show, we'll be able to see everything that we talked about. And then again, if you want to continue the conversation, you can go to Slava's Mahjong Time Facebook group or mine and continue the conversation there. Let's see, uh, does Mahjong, we have another question. We have two questions actually. We'll do the um, hashtag one because it, that was the last question asked. Marsha's asking, does Mahjong Time actually have its own hashtag? Um, I believe we do. Um, Mahjong Time. So just hashtag Mahjong Time. Yeah. That works. That's I you. think that's brilliant. Yeah. That works. <laughs> okay. And Kristen is asking, in a tournament, same people all three rounds or does it get mixed up after each round yes good question Kristen. yes uh, we have a specific seating um, algorithm so we try to mix people as much as we can so they don't play with each other sometimes that is not possible if there are 12 players if there are 16 i believe that's possible but if there are less than 16 people that wouldn't be possible right Let's see, I was just going to look and see how many people are registered for the January 2020 tournament. I believe I saw two, three groups maybe. Let's see, registered players, American Mahjong, here we go. No, we have eight, so two tables right now. So if you're interested in playing in the January tournament at Mahjong Time, click on tournaments when you're logged into Mahjong Time and then find American Mahjong and click register. Every four players will be registered. It's in groups of four. So when you check your status, there has to be four players in order for you to be accepted in, as, a, as a part of the tournament. Right now we have two full tables. Yeah, the prizes will change because we are uh, releasing this uh, Epoch uh, um, software and uh, we will have quite a bit of uh, virtual merchandises. So we'll have, uh, yeah, as a prizes also. So that, that helps too. Marcia asked, what do you do if you have only three players in one of the this like a, a set of players that didn't quite meet the four do they just have to wait till the next month yeah unfortunately we cannot do anything um many times these mm -hmm. are substitutes so they still play um because uh, player service contact these players that are waiting and ask them if they would like to play for 500 coins because now they're getting paid to play if um, if they didn't get in the tournaments because they don't get ranked. Okay. So they pay for, uh, for somebody. Okay. That's all. So it is groups of four. So yes. if you register and there's only three people when the tournament starts, then you'll have to just wait for the next one. 
Yes. But if we get enough attention to the community, then maybe we can get some more players signed up for a bigger tournament. Right now we have two full tables. So if you're interested in playing in a tournament at Mahjong time, register today and share it with your friends too. The more the merrier. With that, Slava, I want to say thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Table Talk Live. And I look forward to more of these episodes with Slava as we learn more and more about Mahjong time. The best place to play Mahjong, yes, in my humble opinion. Play. Thank you so much for having, having me, Michelle. And thank mm -hmm. you, thank you for all your questions uh, in the chat. Uh, very good questions. And uh, I do have uh, some questions that uh, I'll follow up on. I like the Christian idea to have a different type of a tournament because we haven't um, we haven't uh, introduced new tournaments for quite a bit. The marathon was introduced already for three years in running, or maybe even more mm -hmm. or so. So we need some something new, something new, so that gets players excited all the time. Excellent. So this is a, a great way for the community to give feedback and hopefully we'll see something new very soon. Thank you again, Slava. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for coming to this episode of Table Talk Live. It's so nice to see recurring viewers join us. Please share with your friends so that we can continue to grow this community and learn more about Mahjong Time and share more and more about the community that we also love. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Be sure to click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next Table Talk Live, may all your picks be keepers. <laughs>